This is the George Washington University's commencement 2014. On behalf of my colleagues on stage and all my colleagues who make up this great university community, I'm delighted to welcome all of you to the spring commencement in this, the 193rd year of the George Washington University. Will all who are able please stand? We'll begin our ceremony with a presentation of the colors by the George Washington Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps Ceremonial Color Guard and the national anthem sung by Millicent Scarlin. We'll remain standing for the retiring of the colors, followed by the invocation by Sedi Erfan Nouradin, the coordinator of the Islamic Ministry Services at the Washington, D.C. Youth Services Center. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. In the name of the divine, great and constant and mercy, O Lord of many names and attributes, who transcends gender and race, who exists within and without in states of being and non-being, abounding in grace, we extol thanks and praise for the bounties of being a part of a campus of diverse communities, which offers each student unique opportunities. We express our thanks for four years of scholarly instruction with the hope of realizing our potential for individual and communal transformation. We seek refuge in you alone from the difficulties we may face in graduate school applications and job interviews. We seek refuge in you alone 
O oh God, to ask of you to grant us your love and the love of those actions which lead us to you. O oh Lord, forgive our shortcomings and make our actions pure, keeping them from harming others. Grant us such a tolerance and acceptance of others that the doors of ignorance are closed. O oh Lord, give us that certainty by which doubts are dispelled and give us the courage to seek the truth within ourselves. Grant us that discernment which brings us out of confusion, bestow upon us a light to guide us out and bring understanding between people. O oh Lord, we ask you for the grace to have hearts which are tranquil and steadfast, prayerful and gracious, which recognize the truth and adhere to it. O oh Lord, dispel poverty from us and let us not be unmindful of the suffering of others. O oh Lord, bestow on us a light in our eyes, certainty in our hearts, love in our souls, with the, with the delight of your remembrance. O oh Lord, at times of ease and at times of need, make us thankful for our bounties, patient in our calamities, and content with our destinies. Amen. Congratulations. Please be seated. <laughs> Class of 2014, I'm delighted to open this ceremony in this truly one-of-the-kind setting, our nation's mall. To gather here so close to the U.S. Capitol, and the monument dedicated to the nation's first president is a fitting tribute to your achievements in completing your degrees. It's now my honor and privilege to invite the president of the university to join me at the podium. Dr. Stephen Knapp is concluding his seventh year as president of the George Washington University. Dr. Knapp leads a community of faculty, students, and staff that numbers almost 30,000 people. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming the George Washington University's 16th president, Dr. Stephen Knapp. Thank you, Provost Lorman. Chair Carbonell, university trustees, honorary degree recipients, university leaders, distinguished faculty, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Graduates, let me begin by congratulating you on your outstanding achievements and telling you that the George Washington University is very, very proud of you. Very proud of you. I would like to thank our host, the National Park Service and the Park Service staff for their gracious and generous help preparing this majestic setting for today's ceremony. Please join me in thanking the National Park Service and staff. And now, I'd like to continue an important commencement tradition. Will the parents, the families, and the friends of the class of 2014 please rise to accept our congratulations and our thanks. It is now my pleasure to recognize the special guests who today will receive the university's highest honor. Please join me in welcoming social justice advocate and former president and CEO of the Greater Washington Urban League, Maudine Cooper. Entrepreneur, financier, philanthropist, and chairman emeritus of the George Washington Board of Trustees, W. Russell Ramsey. And world-renowned chef, culinary innovator, and passionate champion of education, health, and economic opportunity, Jose Andres. I now have the honor of introducing Nelson A. Carbonell, Jr., Chair of the University's Board of Trustees, Mr. Carbonell.
Thank you, President Knapp. So I don't know if anyone knows this, but in my first year of board chair, my job was to control the weather for this event. And I, I, think, I've done, I think I've done fairly well. So good Thank you. Good morning. I am honored as chair of the Board of Trustees to join President Knapp and my fellow trustees in welcoming all of you on this very significant occasion as we celebrate the class of 2014 and their many achievements and accomplishments. I would first like to ask the trustees who have joined us this morning to please rise and be recognized. To my colleagues, my deepest thanks for your leadership and service to the Board of Trustees. We are grateful for your commitment to the George Washington University. It is also my pleasure to offer a special welcome to our honorary degree recipients. My new friend, Maudine Cooper, who I met for the first time last night. My old friend and predecessor as board chair, W. Russell Ramsey. and my dear friend, Jose Andres. Bienvenido, Jose. We appreciate all of you being here on this momentous occasion to not only celebrate our graduates, but also to recognize the hard work and commitment of the faculty, the support of the staff, and the love and caring of the family and friends that helped them through their journey at GW. It was almost 33 years ago that I came to the George Washington University on a scholarship. I don't exaggerate when I say it was an opportunity of a lifetime. 29 years ago, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in engineering. From my own experience, <laughs> yay, engineering. <laughs> From my own experience, I can tell you that the time I spent here the education I received and the friends I made have stayed with me and continued to enrich my life. GW gave me an opportunity, challenged me intellectually, and prepared me well for the future. I will be forever grateful and loyal to this university. As a board member and as the new chair, I, along with my fellow trustees, have an opportunity to play a leading role in the growth and development of this university. Today, we stand among the most respected and admired universities in the world. Now, each of you, our new GW graduates, has a role to play. Take all you have learned through your academic and co-curricular pursuits and the pride and respect you have gained for your alma mater into the world as citizen leaders. Each of you has been shaped by your experience at the George Washington University. I encourage you to fully utilize your individual talents to make a difference in our world. Finally, don't wait to be asked. Stay connected with this university by visiting campus, letting us know of your accomplishments, sharing your expertise, hiring a fellow GW alum, making gifts to support the institution, and encouraging others to follow in your footsteps here at the George Washington University. We are proud of you, and I know you will always be as proud as I am to say, I am a graduate of the George Washington University. Congratulations to all of you. It is now my pleasure to turn the program back over to Provost Lerman. It's now my honor to recognize this year's recipients of the George Washington Awards. These awards are conferred for extraordinary contributions to the George Washington community. The students and faculty who receive the GW Award have each, in his or her own way, shaped our university, making it the outstanding institution it is today. So it gives me great pleasure to announce this year's honorees. As I call your name, please rise. 
Samantha Margulies, a 2016 candidate for a Doctor of Medicine degree in the School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Edwin McCord, Associate Professor of History and International Affairs. And Jane Wallace, a candidate for a Bachelor of Science degree in the Millikan Institute School of Public Health. Thanks to all of you. Now, please join me once again in congratulating the winners of these awards. <laughs> Let me now introduce Stephen Frankel, president of the GW Alumni Association, who will offer a few remarks and introduce our student speaker for the day. Good morning, everyone. I'm a proud graduate of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences and honored, and honored to be the president of your George Washington Alumni Association. Here in the audience today are members of the board of our association, and together we congratulate you on behalf of the entire GW alumni community, representing over 250,000 alumni in over 150 countries. It's also a great privilege to honor and welcome our alumni emeriti who are in the audience today, uh, sitting to the front of the stage in, in gold robes and uh, commemorative hats. We ask them to rise and have you recognize them as they stand. Thank you. As graduates, you face the challenge of balancing the need to push forward in pursuit of success against the need to experience life in the present moment. When my class was graduating back in the 70s from GW, a line from a Rolling Stones song, Ruby Tuesday, captured this issue. The line was, cash your dreams before they slip away. Today, this issue has been translated by two recent popular songs, into the word YOLO, and you only live once. One song uses the word YOLO for enjoying life, even if it involves potentially risky behavior. The other, the other released in a skit last year on Saturday Night Live, provides a caricature of the exact opposite behavior, an overly protective outlook where everything is just too dangerous, where you should, as they say, take no chances, board your windows up, and just hide. GW graduates understand that we need to live our lives somewhere between those two extremes. So as you continue to explore how you want to live your life, pursue your goals, and, ach and achieve your dreams, having resources and advice to help you get there can be very important. Many graduates from time to time may want some help looking for a job or getting some career advice, getting mentors to help you, or getting established in your next new city. I want you to know that a central theme of GW alumni is promoting a culture of colonials helping colonials. Colonials helping colonials means that GW alumni, students, faculty, and staff are committed to looking out for each other, opening doors for each other, and helping each other become successful. Colonials helping colonials is the name for our established shared expectation that when a colonial reaches out to you, you will help. It's a very practical thing to do. It means we'll take each other's calls, we'll answer each other's emails and text messages, and we will open doors for each other. Yes, you only live once, and Colonials Helping Colonials embeds into our culture the message that you are part of a GW family that will help you accomplish your goals and realize your dreams. There's some concrete actions you can take to advance your interests and to stay connected to GW. You can join the Young Alumni Network. You can participate in alumni networking events. You can download the GW app. Connect with us on uh, Facebook and Twitter and the alumni, GW alumni LinkedIn group, which is very large. 
mentor GW students, give advice or get advice on the online career advisor network, attend class reunions, and visit the campus and especially alumni house. No matter where you live, work, or play, you are always colonials and always members of your GW Alumni Association that is here to help you. And now is my great privilege to introduce our student speaker, Gabriel Felder. <laughs> Gabe was the winner of our student commencement speaker competition, which this year had more than 60 very impressive entries. Gabe graduates today with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Communication from the School of Media and Public Affairs. Born in Stanford, Connecticut, he spent a year studying in Israel, in Jerusalem, and then arrived here at GW. And he quickly became involved in Jewish student life and then became president of the Jewish Student Association. For his documentary production class, he examined and then co-created a film about the snakehead fish. And the documentary, entitled Appropriately Invasive, was featured in this year's Environmental Film Festival here in Washington. Following graduation, Gabe will pursue his passion for education and community building as a member of Teach for America in New York. So please join me in welcoming Gabriel Felder. Thank you, Mr. Franco. Three years, one month, and three days ago, I had a conversation with my father. We had just gotten back from Colonial Inauguration, and he was rewarding himself for surviving three days of the DC summer heat with a pint of haagen -Dazs. I was talking about how excited I was to be beginning this part of my life, reveling in all that GW had to offer. I was lost in my own thoughts about what classes I was thinking about taking, what student orgs I wanted to be involved in, and so on and so forth. And my father looked up from his ice cream and asked, so you're excited to go? I said, of course, annoyed he was asking such an obvious question, to which he immediately responded, good, just don't waste it. I took the advice to heart, but what I realize now is I didn't really need it. To be a GW student is antithetical to wasting it. We are perhaps best known as those that don't just seize opportunities, but make our own. We are the students who internalize best at our time at the university the words of the late Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, that in each journey of our lives, we must fully be where we are. We may only be passing through on our way to somewhere else seemingly more important. Nevertheless, there is purpose in where we are right now. We are the students that after an internship on the Hill, a federal work study job at Hellwell, spend hours in Gelman researching a paper or studying for a midterm. We are industrious. We are GW Colonials. We are not just college students. We do not sit idly by and reminisce about better days behind us. We do not mope and wait for the world to deliver better things. We know never to take the present for granted, that life does not begin till we say it does. My father never got to see his son follow that advice. He passed away a little over a month after that humid June night. But I can look today at this crowd and see proud parents beaming at the sight of their children in their caps and gowns. And I can wholeheartedly say that none of us have wasted the amazing opportunity that it was to be given an education at the George Washington University. And I can look at my mother and my sister's faces, and I can say wholeheartedly to my father that he should have known I would make the most of my four years. I'm a colonial after all. It's in my blood. Now, I want you to think back to that first day and think of every morning you greeted this campus, sleepy with a cup of Gelman Starbucks in your hand, and be grateful for every professor who taught you to stand up and be heard, to every mentor that pushed you to lead and not follow, 
and to every advisor you have had for his or her endless help in ensuring your education was the best it could be. More than anything, be grateful to your parents who have selfly supported you your entire life. Be proud of the men and women you have become because you will change the world for the better. This moment is ours, but it's not our only one, just one of many, and I cannot wait to watch us seize them all. Congratulations, Lechaim and Mazel Tov to the class of 2014! Now guys, let's get a class picture. Thank you very much, Gabe. Your remarks and your achievements, of course, inspire all of us. And now at the time in our program when President Knapp will confer the honorary degrees. The recipient of our first honorary degree this morning will be introduced by Asiana Joyce. Asiana is a first-generation college student who graduates today with a bachelor's degree in psychology and a minor in journalism and mass communication. She is currently an intern at Black Entertainment Television Network, and she's concluded an internship with Fox 5 News. She's also established her own WRGW talk show and has founded a service-based television show and a mentoring organization for youth called Positivity Mentoring. In September, Asiana was awarded the GW Black Alumni Association Emerging Impact Award, which recognizes current students who are making an impact on GW's campus and the local community. President Knapp, I am honored to present to you Maudine Cooper for the degree of Doctor of Public Service Honoris Causa. You have dedicated your career to helping people advance in employment, education, and business ownership in the Washington, D.C. area. As an attorney, public official, and nonprofit leader, you have worked tirelessly to enhance life for Washingtonians. You were educated at Howard University, earn, earning a bachelor's degree in business administration in 1964 and a Juris Doctor in 1971. You began your career as a tax attorney and college instructor before joining the Washington Bureau of the National Urban League in 1973. There you rose to the rank of Vice President and directed the League's legislative office in the District of Columbia. You joined the District of Columbia government in 1983 and served your city as Director of the Office of Human Rights and, of, and the Office of Minority Business Opportunity. In these roles, you helped ensure equal opportunity employment and housing for district residents. Later, you served as Chief of Staff to Mayor Marion Barry before returning to the National Urban League in 1990, this time as President and Chief Executive Officer of the Greater Washington Urban League. Your leadership there was essential to the provision of critical education, employment training, housing, and health services to more than 65,000 of our community members annually. As a civic leader, your achievements and awards are inspiring. You serve on boards and commissions with Mass Mutual Financial Group, the Washington Area U.S. Savings Bond Campaign, and the Mayor's Health Services Reform Commission. You are president of the Capital Area Council of Urban League Presidents and a member of the District of Columbia Bar Association, the D.C. Chamber of Commerce, and Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. You have received the Isaiah Award for the Pursuit of Justice, presented by the Washington Chapter of the American Jewish Committee. We're named one of McDonald's black history makers of today in Washington, D.C. area. We're honored with the Vanguard Award in Civic Engagement from the National Urban League, and we're inducted into the Washington, D.C. Hall of Fame. The Urban League has named an award for young professionals in your honor. Maudine Cooper, in recognition of all the foregoing, the George Washington University proudly confers upon you the degree of Doctor of Public Service, Honoris Causa,
with all the rights, duties, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Is it still morning? <laughs> Good morning, students of the class of 2014, parents, guardians, friends. Parents and guardians, you don't have to run from the phone anymore because they don't need any more money. <laughs> so they let you know children are forever, even when they're 30 and 40. But this is an honor that I cannot give enough words, enough language to tell you how proud I am. Uh, you know, I'm recently retired. And for those of you who are over 50, I moved into an assisted living facility. So that tells you I'm really old. <laughs> With this university's honor, I acknowledge that we've had a tremendous partnership over the years. It has been extraordinary. We've had your students working with the Urban League, doing real work. I tell people we did not have them answering the phone and copying papers. They worked. We've taught, taught some of the students how to write proposals. Now, that's, that's not something that's, that's make, make work. It is serious. Uh, we were a social services organization. I retired in, de in December. And it, uh, the local is 75 years old. And I was proud to be the president for over 25 years. Your past president, Stephen Joel <laughs> Trackenberg, is on our board of directors. And your current president, Stephen <clears throat> Knapp, is, a, is on our board. The league, oh, I can't even talk. The league's current board chair, Michael Aiken, is president of Rango Link, is a graduate of the university. Many of the alumni and students have worked, and they've come back to volunteer. We're so pleased. So we have a long and impressive history. I'm also thanking Bernard Demchuk for helping to make this possible. For this nomination and all the support he has provided all these years, we know each other as friends, as colleagues, and as folks that bailed each other out of, out of a little bit of trouble. <laughs> All of my life, I wanted to help people in a small way. As time went by, through the city and through the Urban League, I found a means of helping in a larger way. You heard the numbers that were read about the services we provide. They have not changed. We have a new president. But as you know here at the university, you change leadership, but time goes on. For those of you who are dreading Monday, job search day, find a job, want a job, can't find a job, it's going to be all right. Trust me. I'm from the generation where you did what you could, even at the what, minimum wage of about 5 or $6. You'll be all right. Minimum wage isn't bad. It's money. <laughs> and when you, when you call your parents and tell them what kind of job you got, you're going to hear a scream. They're so happy you're working, <laughs> contributing to all that they've done all these years. And to all of you, I'm going to leave you with these words from Laura Harvey, editor of The Daily Word. Go, be who you are, openly and authentically. Follow people to see you at your best, your worst, and everything in between. You may never know who you are inspire, inspiring and encouraged just by being yourself. And I have to tell you, I fired a young lady once. And I ran into her at a, at a function. So I figured she was going to come and punch me in my mouth or something. <laughs> she came over and thanked me for firing, her, <clears throat> for firing her. I said, why are you thanking me? She said, because you fired me. I had to go to school. I got a scholarship. I went to school. I graduated. And now I have a good job. I said, you do. It was a better job than she had at the league. But at any rate, she thanked me. So don't be afraid to, to do the right thing when it's necessary. And sometimes when it's not. Again, I thank you for this honor. God bless you on your journey. And I'm going to end with this note. You heard folks tell you what you're going to do next week, next year, five years from now. Next week, don't call your parents. Write a check. Don't buy that big bottle of whatever. Write a check. Whether it's $5, $5,000, or $5 million, whatever the amount is, your university needs you. You say, well, they've met my needs. Now it's your turn to meet their needs. Thank you.
Our second honorary degree recipient will be introduced by Kelly Danver. <laughs> Kelly graduates today with a bachelor's degree in history. She is currently an intern in the university's Office of Alumni Relations, working as part of the GW Alumni Magazine staff. During her time here, she participated in the GW College Democrats, WRGW, and the co-ed honors fraternity, Phi Sigma Pi. President Knapp, I am honored to present to you W. Russell Ramsey for the degree of Doctor of Public Service, honoris causa. You are a native Washingtonian and have spent most of your life contributing to the progress of your hometown as an entrepreneur, businessman, education leader, and philanthropist. You enrolled at the George Washington University in 1977, the recipient of a baseball scholarship. Four years later, you graduated with a bachelor's degree in business administration. Since your graduation, you have, <laughs> you have been inducted into the GW Athletic Hall of Fame and honored as a member of the baseball program's all-century team. In 1989, you and two business partners mortgaged your houses and founded Friedman Billings Ramsey Group in a small office on Pennsylvania Avenue, not far from the White House. You shared one phone line. Within a few years, your company emerged as one of the preeminent investment banks in the country, ultimately providing billions of dollars in capital for companies in a wide range of industries and employing more than 2,000 people. In 2001, you retired from Friedman Billings Ramsey Group and founded Ramsey Asset Management, where you currently serve as Chairman, Chief Executive Officer, and Chief Investment Officer. Throughout your career, you have been an active investor in many startup and young companies providing capital, guidance, and expertise critical to their growth. Your generosity has benefited not only fledgling companies, but also the greater Washington, D.C. community. You and your wife, Norma, are dedicated to improving the education and well-being of at-risk families through the D.W. Russell and Norma G. Ramsey Foundation. You are also founding investors in Venture Philanthropy Partners, which has contributed nearly 80 million to nonprofit organizations in the D.C. area over the last 13 years. In 2005, you established the Ramsey Student Investment Fund at the George Washington University, offering graduate business students the opportunity to gain invaluable real-world experience in portfolio management. Your legacy at George Washington reaches far beyond your years as a student, athlete, and philanthropist. In 1998, you began a distinguished tenure on the university's Board of Trustees. As chair of the board from 2007 to 2013, your achievements were vital to the growth and development of the university. You played a critical role in helping the university's endowment surpass the one billion threshold and also directed the special search committee for the university's 16th president. Under your leadership, the university developed a far-reaching academic strategic plan, restructured its medical center, and redeveloped campus to include new world-class academic and residential facilities, such as the forthcoming Science and Engineering Hall, the George Washington Museum, and the Milken Institute School of Public Health Building. W. Russell Ramsey, in recognition of, of all the foregoing, the George Washington University proudly confers upon you the degree of Doctor of Public Service, onerous causa, with all the rights, duties, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Right on cue, my speech went up in the wind. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. What an amazing day to celebrate in the nation's capital this amazing university. And I have to say, uh, for me, you have to give me a moment here while I get these papers back together.
There's a reason I'm not in the big leagues. I obviously couldn't turn two in Yankee Stadium here. So President Knapp, uh, Chairman Carbonell, members of the Board of Trustees, and this great team that supports them, students, alumni, supporters of GW, and most importantly, my family, my wife Norma, Bailey, Eric, Mark, and Paige, my phenomenal brother, and all the family friends, I thank you so much for this honor. I don't believe I will ever be able to fully convey what this means to me. And I will say that even though I didn't plan for the win to take away my speech, that it did give me a moment to sort of get this lump out of my throat, because uh, this means as much to me as, as anything I can imagine. I was the first in my family to ever attend college. The first person. And the older I get, the more I appreciate just how incredible this opportunity was. And of course, it was even more pivotal because the school that gave me an opportunity to earn a degree was the George Washington University. So here I am, a doctor. I imagine there are a few Ramseys in heaven, led by my mom and dad, who are really beaming with pride. I, I know there are a few other people in Ramsey's up there who can't believe it's true. <laughs> I never thought about being a doctor. I played baseball. I would have been as happy attending bar at the 21st Amendment. But life takes you to places that you don't anticipate. It hands you challenges you don't anticipate. And every time you are handed an opportunity, you usually get a responsibility that you did not also fully anticipate. I came to, to GW as a student, came to the baseball diamond as an athlete, and I came to the chairmanship of the board as an alumnus. They were such different environments, such different demands, such different teams. But always, I kept three fundamentals in mind. I call them my three Ps, passion, purpose, and possibility. Nothing great is ever accomplished without passion. You gotta feel it in your heart. Nothing great is ever accomplished without a strong sense of purpose, a clear vision. And nothing is ever great accomplished without people who have the audacity to say, why not? Why not aim higher? Why not do better? Why shouldn't we, GW, aim to be the very best in the world? I've had my share of good breaks in my life, but one of the best breaks I ever had is to work alongside people who believe in those principles just as deeply as I do. Together, we have tried to build a university that is not only stronger and larger than before, but one that is more vital and focused and optimistic. We have tried to build a team that feels that in its bones. Sometimes I think about the great Lou Gehrig and his speech about being, quote, the luckiest man on the face of the planet. Now, if you watch just that brief clip, you might think he was talking about his baseball records or all the fans who were cheering him. But his message was just the opposite. He said he was the luckiest man in the world because he was part of an amazing team. Then one by one, he singled out his teammates and he talked about why they were great. He said, quote, how many of you wouldn't feel privileged to be a part of this great team even for just one day? Even for just one day, that's how deeply he felt about it. That's the way I feel about GW. So very, very lucky and very privileged. Who wouldn't want to be a part of a team like this, even for just one day. I have no idea how much of a difference I've made to GW over the last 15 years. 
That's not for me to say, but I am certain of one thing. I have benefited in ways that can never be measured from the generosity and vision of those who came before me. And I've been inspired by the brilliance of those who have worked alongside of me. I see so many of them here on this stage today and in this audience, and I have been inspired by their drive. What an amazing university. What an amazing team. I am humbled to no end, and I thank you all for being here. I have to say, um, after those eloquent remarks, I also want to comment that uh, on another windy commencement, uh, the same thing happened to uh, my hat that just happened to the speech you saw a moment ago. But it was deftly caught in a split second by Dr. Ramsey <laughs> demonstrating his Hall of Fame baseball skills. I don't know if you recall that, sir. I remain grateful for that intervention. Thank you. Our final honorary degree recipient will be introduced by Andrew Horry. Andrew is a December 2013 graduate of the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, who earned a bachelor's degree in political science with a minor in philosophy. As a student, he was actively involved in the Alternative Breaks program Community Building Community Service Group, and Alpha Phi Omega Fraternity. He hopes to combine his passion for food and public service to address issues of food justice and food security around the world. Mr. President Knapp, I'm honored to present to you Jose Andres for the degree of Doctor of Public Service, Honoris Causa. You grew up in Barcelona, Spain, and trained under Ferran Adria, widely considered one of the most innovative chefs in the world. You moved to the United States at age 20, bringing with you not only a passion for Spanish cooking, but also a deep commitment to improving the lives of those around you. You have called Washington your home for more than two decades, co-founding the first of many notable restaurants, Haleo, in 1993. Since then, you have won nearly every culinary award in the United States, including the James Beard Award for Outstanding Chef, and your cooking has delighted patrons and food critics in Washington, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Miami, and Puerto Rico. Your culinary passion is more than equaled by your dedication to eradicating hunger and improving nutrition in the United States and across the world. You are Emeritus Chairman and a devoted board member of DC Central Kitchen and Chair of the Board of LA Kitchen, organizations that empower citizens through job training programs and engage communities by promoting healthy eating initiatives. After a devastating earthquake struck Haiti in 2010, you founded World Central Kitchen, a nonprofit organization that works to respond to the challenges of poverty and economic disparities around the world. You were named by then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, a culinary ambassador for the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves, through which you helped to raise awareness of the negative effects of traditional cook stoves in developing countries. In 2010, you joined First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign in an effort to inspire individuals and families to look for innovative ways of improving the health of their communities. Your contributions have extended to the classroom you have lectured at Harvard University in the International Culinary Center, where you were named Dean of the Spanish Culinary Program. Here at George Washington, you have had a tremendous impact on our students and our campus, transforming our understanding of food's influence on global health and economic prosperity. You are a member of the university-wide Urban Food Task Force and serve as special advisor to the president on food issues. You have also helped develop a high school curriculum that uses example from the world of food science, culture, and history as aids in the teaching of traditional subjects. At the School Without Walls, a public high school located on George Washington's Foggy Bottom campus. 
Your extensive lift, list of honors includes recognition not only for your culinary innovations, but also for your efforts to address issues of food insecurity, both locally and globally. In 2010, Spain's Ministry of Culture awarded you the Order of the Arts and Letters Medallion, making you the first chef to receive that distinction. In 2012, Time Magazine named you one of the 100 most influential people in the world. And just this month, Refugees International bestowed on you its highest honor, the McCall Pierre Paoli Humanitarian Award. Jose Andres, in recognition of all the foregoing, the George Washington University proudly confers upon you the degree of Doctor of Public Service, onerous causa with all the rights, duties, and privileges pertaining thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, our commencement speaker, Dr. Jose Andres. Wow. Thank you, Chairman Carbonell. President Knapp, Provost Lerman, and all other honored guests, and everybody who made this commencement possible. My name is Jose Andres, and I am a cook. <laughs> to, the, to the class of 2014, Congratulations, you made it. <clears throat> you have worked hard to arrive at this moment, and it is a privilege to be here with you today. When President Knapp asked me to speak at your commencement, thought, why a chef? Even my daughter said, they ask you to speak or to cook lunch for the graduates. <laughs> Give me a break. But they have, they have a point. After all, I'm not a famous politician, journalist, or movie star. I'm not one of the coolest first ladies ever, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and I have not been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize yet. <laughs> but then President Knapp said, I was the first person he called. Really? <laughs> Ta take a look, take a look. Hello? Oh, President Knapp. Good to hear from you. Oh, the GW commencement. Uh, when is it? May the 18th. Hold on, I'll have a look. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm watching television that evening. <laughs> but you could, uh, you could call Jose Andreas. He's got an accent which is even harder to understand than mine. <laughs> Here at the Department of Justice, we are committed to creating the more equal and more just society that all of our citizens deserve. And as Attorney General of the United States, I'm dedicated... Uh, wait, hold. Hi. President Knapp. Professor Knapp. This is Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Uh, this is Al Roker. Yeah. Oh, President Knapp, how are you? Hi, President Knapp. Oh, hello, President Knapp. How are you? Oh, President Knapp. The GW commencement. It's on the mall? The GW commencement. The GW commencement. Me. The commencement speech. Wow. When? When is it? Oh, the George Washington commencement? Yeah, when is that? On May 18th. No, no, I, I, well, I'm, I'm very honored and flattered, but we're, we're working on a movie right now, so I won't be available. Oh, no, I'm filming that day. Oh, I, I can't make it. I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be uh, filming that day, so I, I, I can't. Oh, gee, sir, I'm very sorry. I just cannot. I just don't have the time. I'm sorry. I'm not available. Yeah, I'm actually really busy that day. Yeah. I, I just can't. 
you know what? Hey, you should call Jose Andres. Have you considered maybe Jose? My good buddy, Jose Andres. Jose Andres, he does anything. Try Jose Andres. Jose Andres. Call Jose Andres. What about Jose Andres? So his email address is sparkly paella boy, boy spelled B O I, at hotmail.com. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Good luck. <clears throat> President Knapp, we will talk later. People of George Washington University, it is an honor and I am humble to be here. Truth be told, this is the first university graduation that I have attended. I dropped out of high school and then went on to cooking school and got my education in the kitchen of life. And today, I got my degree. Thank you. So again, why a chef? Why could a guy who cooks for a living say to a group of accomplished graduates like you? I have learned through pursuing my passion that I could have an impact through the power of food. When I was a young boy in Spain, every summer, my parents invite me, invited friends and family to a picnic. I always wanted to help my father to cook a big paella over an open fire. But my father instead put me in charge of gathering the wood and help build that fire. But I wanted to cook. One Sunday, after years of making the fire, my simmering frustration exploded. Boom! I want to cook that. Go away, he said. We will talk later. After the meal was over, my father put his hand on my shoulder and said, son, why are you feeling bad? Taking care of the fire is the most important thing. If you control the fire, then, and only then, you will become a cook. I realized then that if I want to reach my dreams, first I had to lay down the foundation. The same is true of the journey you are about to take. You may want to do the cooking, but first you must learn how to build the fire. Yes. When I, I was around your age, I joined the Spanish Navy. My role? Cooking for the Admiral at his house. What? I wanted to be at the sea. Well, after a few months of service, I went to the office of the Admiral. I knocked on the door and told him, my dream was to sail, not on any ship, but the Juan Sebastián del Cano, the greatest ship ever built, at least to me. The admiral granted my wish. I sailed around the world where I got my first glimpse of America. I fell in love with the idea that no matter what your background, Anything was possible here. I wanted to be part of the American dream. And if I hadn't knocked on that door, I wouldn't be here today. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't be afraid to knock on that door. Don't miss the opportunity to sell into your future. Upon finishing my Navy service, I returned to America. The first chance I got, legally, in cases any immigration officer. 
No one was waiting to greet me. Every dollar I had went to my taxi fare. Fifty dollars exactly. But fifty dollars was enough to get me halfway to my new job. I watched the yellow cab drive away, and there I sat on a cold January night, 100 blocks from where I needed to be, watching the steam rise from the streets of New York. Welcome to America, Jose. <laughs> My story is not one of overnight success. When I found myself alone in a new country, I didn't buy a lottery ticket. I didn't hit the jackpot. I just kept going. On that cold night, I pick up my bags and I start walking. All these years later, my path has brought me here, as your path has led you here to this day to celebrate your accomplishments. Come on, people of George Washington, look where you are. You are at the epicenter of the American dream. But today, you are doing something much more important. You are shaping the new American dream. It's not about having high-paying jobs, big houses, fast cars. There is nothing wrong with that. But the new American dream is bigger. It's about to achieve your success while also making an impact in the world. What you create for yourselves, you must also create for others. We need to know ourselves, embrace our individuality. But it's not only the I, it is the we. <laughs> the world is yours to claim, not because a diploma, but because we have each other. Look to your left. Come on, do it. Look to your left. Now, look to your right. Yes, we can never forget that we are only as good as the people we have around us. I wouldn't be standing here today I, bo I wouldn't be standing here today without those who supported me, my wife, my children. You are surrounded by family, friends, and your George Washington community. We are all here to lift you up, cheering your achievements and embracing your failures. But as you embark on your journey ahead, Never forget that your loved ones have been with you every step of the way. Class of 2014, don't you think your family and friends deserve another big round of applause? <laughs> what happens next is up to you. But remember, your journey won't be easy. My journey wasn't easy. I moved to DC from New York to be the head chef of a Spanish tapas restaurant, Jaleo. Many people, many people told my partners and me that it was a crazy idea. The location, terrible. 7th and E, at the time, it was no man's land. And at Tapas restaurant, no one knew what I was talking about. They would, they would ask me, are you the bouncer? <laughs> tapas people, tapas, no topless. <laughs> I threw myself into it. Yeah. I couldn't help it. I threw myself into it. I worked hard in the kitchen. I greeted customers trying to understand, trying to learn, trying to adapt. I listened, and believe me, I made a lot of mistakes. As Winston Churchill said, success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. 
I stumble a lot. But today, I am proud to say that Haleo has become part of the DNA of this city, and Tapas has become part of the American mosaic. There will always be critics and naysayers telling you what you cannot do, that it is impossible. There will always be more people bringing you down than lifting you up. It seems that way sometimes. But let me tell you, get a cocktail shaker <laughs> if you are over 21. <laughs> At your heart your soul, your brain, your instinct, and shake it hard. Serve it straight up. But let me give you a secret ingredient. Add a dash of the criticism on top, because those naysayers play an important role too. They motivate you to rise above, to challenge yourself, to prove them wrong. As you move forward in your career, you might look back and think that this school was the easy part. Maybe not easy, but predictable. And life, as you already probably know, is anything but predictable. Shortly after I arrived in DC, I met my wife, Patricia. Before I learned how to be a boyfriend, we got engaged. Before I learned how to be a husband, I became a father, and then, as my daughters grew into young girls, I realized that the easiest part of being a dad might have been changing diapers. <laughs> so, what do you do when life takes an unexpected turn? Friends, my advice, don't follow a recipe. Funny coming from a cook, no? <laughs> when we go by the book, we lose our ability to adapt, to be creative. Sometimes you will find yourself without an ingredient or two. It will seem like everything is going wrong. If things don't go as expected, make the unexpected work in your favor. Change the name of the dish. <laughs> That was my recipe for today. <laughs> Don't imitate what has already been done. Don't go along with someone else's expectations for what your life should look like. Don't assume that because things have been always been a certain way, they will never be any different. The challenges we face today, hunger, poverty, inequality, war, many others, have been around forever. But that doesn't mean it always has to be this way. That is where we need you the most. We need you to come up with new solutions. And to do that, new recipes for success must be written. You will write them. Success is no longer about achieving your goals. It is about using your skills and talents to do something bigger in the world. This is the new American dream. For, for me, food is a way to tell a story, a story about myself, about faraway places, the people I've met, and the things I learned along the way. Your recipe should tell your story. In my classes at George Washington, I heard your great ideas for how to make our world a better place. As you leave this university, you will start careers in cities around the world. Whatever you land, make an impact. One of our regulars at Haleo was the late Senator Daniel Patrick Monaghan, who helped revitalize downtown DC. Yeah, we can, we can give him. 
he taught me that neighborhoods are transformed when we see potential where others see only this repair. He told me that if you love America, America will always love you back. In November, my wife and I became American citizens. We found a new place to belong. I raised my hand, I took the oath of citizenship. It was more than a formality. I felt responsible to speak up for those who are still searching for the, their place to belong. There are 11 million undocumented immigrants in our country, some who are students just like you. These people are right in front of us, working hard to maintain our quality of life. I think they deserve a chance to belong, a chance to be part of the new American dream. It's about seeing the potential where others see only disrepair. Immigration is not a problem for us to fix. It's an opportunity for us to seize. <laughs> Hashtag immigration reform. Many of you, many, you will end in positions of power. Your decisions, your actions, will be solving tough challenges of today. Some of you might even end up at the top of that beautiful hill. Senator Harry Reid and Representative Eric Cantor both graduated from George Washington. We all come from different places and perspectives, but we all belong to this university, to this planet. Today, we are 6,000 graduates strong, joining more than a quarter million George Washington alumni in 150 countries. You see how powerful this is. We are a big army. We have the opportunity to change the world and shape the new American dream, but only if we work together. I became a cook thanks to my father, showing me how to control the fire. That same knowledge also taught me that my profession has the power to better the world. In my restaurants, I was happy to feed the few, but I started to think, what if together we could feed the many? I joined this Central Kitchen 20 years ago as a young volunteer, peeling potatoes with homeless, ex-convicts, ex-drug addicts, and sharing stories while feeding thousands a day. Robert Egger, my hero, the founder, always told me, too often, Charity is about the redemption of the giver, not the liberation of the receiver. And we need to change that. <laughs> These words were on my mind when I first visited Haiti, weeks after the earthquake. I didn't want to throw money at the problem, but instead to invest in sustainable solutions. For Haitians, it means bringing clean cook stoves that will improve their health and prevent deforestation. It's not about giving bread to orphans. It's building a bakery that can feed an orphanage and sell the bread in the city. It's not about giving food aid to school children. It's starting a farm that can feed those children while the produce is sold in the market. Each of you has unique talents. Build the fire. Embrace your passions and profession. Along the way, you will find opportunities to serve in your communities and around the world. George Washington, you already did this year more than a quarter million hours of volunteer work. Don't stop. We need you. you. 
sometimes our journeys may feel uncertain and without purpose, but every step we take brings us closer to understanding why we are here. My favorite Spanish poet, Antonio Machado, once said, your footsteps are the path and nothing more. There is no path. The path is made by walking. Start walking. I will be watching. We will be watching to see what path you create. My name is Jose Andres. I am a cook, and I am so proud of all of you. Gracias. Graduates, commencement is a time to celebrate your accomplishments, but it's also a time to reflect on what comes next, not so much in specific terms, but rather in the broader sense of what it means to be a citizen of our world and how you might draw upon what you have learned to become an even more engaged member of society. At the George Washington University, we help you along with the traditional graduation ritual, the charge to the graduates. President Knapp, I invite you to join me at the podium to offer your charge to the graduating class. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor of welcoming our new graduates to the lifelong and worldwide community of George Washington University alumni. Class of 2014, you are exceptional men and women, and I am proud to call you graduates of this great university. This is a very significant day for you and for the family and friends who have supported you throughout your educational journey. We gather at this majestic setting on the National Mall to celebrate your accomplishments, applaud your hard work and perseverance, and honor your commitment to serve as active and engaged citizens of your communities, your nations, and the world. Graduates, I charge you to keep alive the spirit, the energy, the imagination, and the commitment to service that have won our admiration during your years in our midst. I charge you also to keep alive the curiosity that has guided you through your studies here, so that whatever work you undertake will constantly be refreshed by new knowledge. And I charge you to nourish the respect you have learned for all persons, especially those whose cultures, traditions, and opinions differ from your own. You are our future. We depend on you to repair what earlier generations have broken, to build what we have left unbuilt, to learn what we have not yet learned, to heal what we have so far left unhealed. And as you go forth to do these things, Always know that at the George Washington University, you have a home in the heart of this nation's capital. Congratulations and best wishes to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the university will now confer the bachelor's, master's, doctoral, and professional degrees. I ask the deans to rise and come forward in the order of the founding of their schools. Graduates, as your dean announces degrees from your college or school, please rise and remain standing until all the degrees of the university are conferred. For degrees in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Ben Vincent III. President Knapp, it is with great pride that I present the candidate for the following degrees. Associate in Arts, Bachelor of Arts, 
Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, Master of Forensic Sciences, Master of Philosophy, Master of Psychology, Master of Public Administration, Master of Public Policy, <laughs> Doctor of Psychology, and Doctor of Philosophy. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For degrees in the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, Dean Jeffrey Ackman. President Knapp. I am very pleased to present the candidates for the following degrees. Associate in Science, Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences, Master of Science in Health Sciences, Doctor of Medicine, Doctor of Physical Therapy, these candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that these degrees be conferred. For degrees in the law school, Interim Dean Gregory Maggs. President Knapp. It is my pleasure to present the candidates for the following degrees. Juris Doctor, Master of Laws. These candidates have completed all the requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For degrees in the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Dean David Dolling. President Knapp, it is an honor to present to you the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Applied Scientist, Engineer, Doctor of Philosophy, and Doctor of Science. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For degrees, in the Graduate School of Education and Human Development. <laughs> Dean Michael Foyer. President Knapp. It's a great honor to present the candidates for the following degrees. Master of Arts in Education and Human Development. Master of Arts in Teaching. Master of Education. Education Specialist. And Doctor of Education. These extraordinary candidates have completed all requirements for their degrees indicated, and the world-class faculty of GSHED asks that the degrees be conferred. For degrees in the School of Business, Interim Dean Christopher Kays. President Knapp. It is with great pleasure that I present the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelors of Accountancy. <laughs> Bachelors of Business Administration. <laughs> Masters of Accountancy. <laughs> Masters of Business Administration. <laughs> Ma Masters of Science and Business Analytics. 
Masters of Science in Finance. Masters of Finance in Information Systems Technology. Masters of Science in Project Management. Masters of, Sci Masters of Tourism Administration. And Doctorate of Philosophy. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degree indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For candidates in the Elliott School of International Affairs, D. Michael Brown. President Knapp. On behalf of the faculty of GW's Elliott School of International Affairs, the most dynamic school of international affairs in the world, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts. Master of Arts. Master of International Policy and Practice. Master of International Studies. These candidates have completed their degree requirements, and the faculty asks that their degrees be confirmed. For the Milliken Institute School of Public Health, the Michael and Lori Milliken Dean of Public Health, Lynn Goldman. President Mapp. It is a great honor to present the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Master of Public Health, Master of Health Services Administration, and Doctor of Public Health. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For the College of Professional Studies, Dean Ali Eskandarian. President Knapp. Second in dynamism only to the Elliott School of International Affairs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the president says we are first, so. <laughs> first. <I'm> tied. <laughs> tied. <laughs> I am very proud. I am very proud uh, to present the candidates for the following degrees. Associate in uh, Professional Studies, Bachelor in Professional Studies, and Master in Professional Studies. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that the degrees be conferred. For the School of Nursing, Dean Jean Johnson. President Knapp, I am very honored to present to you the graduating class of the very best School of Nursing in the country and the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master of Science in Nursing, and Doctor of Nursing Practice. These candidates have completed all requirements for the degrees indicated, and the faculty asks that these degrees be conferred. Will all the candidates of the class of 2014 who are not yet standing please rise? President Knapp, before you stand, the candidates for bachelor's, master's, doctoral, and professional degrees of the George Washington University. By virtue of the authority granted by the Congress of the United States of America, vested in the Board of Trustees of the George Washington University, and by the trustees of the university delegated to me, I hereby confer your degrees and declare you fully entitled to all their rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities.
And now, as a symbol of your new status as university graduates, you may move the tassels on your caps from right to left. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations, graduates. Please join Millicent Scarlett in singing your alma mater. The words are on the back of your program, and then please remain standing for the academic recession. <laughs> 